Welcome to the Hawk Podcast. Right now we have Matt right here, Habibi Matt, to be exact. He's yes, a Christian singer and a rap artist. We're here to talk about your experiences and see kind of what gets you really close to God, for one, because I know some people are very, very far away from that, as well as what got you into singing, man, because you have a beautiful freaking voice, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man, it's, it's an honor to be here with my friend Ibrahim. You know, he's cool. I'm glad he reached out. You know, I don't usually work with people, but I seen how he talks and I seen his, you know, beliefs. And I was like, you know what? Absolutely. This is a guy I want to work with. And this is a guy that I want to, mm -hmm. you know, talk. With, and then, so. of course, absolutely, man. I'm happy to have you here as well. Just as a disclaimer, usually um, for those who know me, they know I curse my, my mind out sometimes because that's how I evoke a lot of the things just for respect for mad and plus uh we're talking about a religious topic right now we're going to stay far far away from that so you were born a christian to start correct i was born a catholic actually for so where i'm from right okay. now is california but i was born and raised in chicago and in the church uh it was a catholic little uh, middle eastern church and to as a little boy i would sing you know the the classic songs and sing in front of you know people and that's really how i uh, became mm -hmm. who i am today so yeah bro i was i was really born a catholic but it was only till i moved over here to california about 12 years ago um, we went to a catholic mm -hmm. orthodox church but i would never understand anything you know like when you go to church you want to you want to learn something when you leave but it was it was always in a different yeah. language like coptic and it was, I knew, I know some Arabic, but sometimes they would do Arabic. Sometimes they would just stick to Coptic. And so it was just, it was really strict mm -hmm. and I never learned anything. And a friend of mine, there's a uh, church that he goes to. Okay. It's called Visalia First. And I was going to there, you know, he, he brought me to there. And as soon as I walked in, um, it looked like a concert, yeah. bro. Like it was legit. It was crazy. Like uh -huh. it was amazing, bro. And I was like, you know what? Like everything in me saw a vision that I would be I see, on that stage one day. So I'm, I'm a Muslim. I was born a Muslim and that's kind of how, how we go yeah. about things. It's very rare that yeah, you yeah. see a Muslim singing about Islam at a mosque, period. We don't sing at mosques. We just you know go there, pray, uh -huh. speak to each other. But as far as yeah. like becoming the singer, how does that how does that work from your end? You'd basically audition. It was during COVID at the time. So I, I had nothing to do with music. I kind of like okay. laid down on the singing. It was only until, you know, middle school is when I, I was singing in a hall one day and somebody came up to me. They said, hey, you sound really great. Like we would mm -hmm. love to have you in our choir. So I tried out for the choir. I got in, okay. I started performing, you know, and I just, I really started for I really started fulfilling yeah, the, the yeah. gift that God gave me. I really started embracing it, and then I just got better. I kept practicing. I started performing in front of other people. But the music I was making wasn't really about God. It was really about, you know, love, girls. Yeah, it's just yeah. I wasn't focused on God at the time because I was caring about what mm -hmm. other people would think. But, you know... I said, you know what? I have to, I have to yep. represent God. Like this is, there's no purpose. I feel, I feel soulless when I release music yep. because it's not about him. It's about me. And I was just like, man, absolutely, this is not what I want to do, you know? And I dropped my first Christian song, you know, it's out everywhere. It's called The Way by Habibi Matt. So if you guys want to go check it out, oh, dude, it's, my the, the song is good. That's, but... for, that's for sure. So. <laughs> Um, and you definitely do have a, have a great, great voice um, oh, from, from what okay. I've seen. Um, as far as you Thank said, you, you auditioned. So it was like church, God talent, or how, how did that how did that work? So basically, you know, I saw the vision. My sister saw the vision. She was like, hey, I see you up there, and I want you to be up there. So I reached around. I asked, you know, I of course, I went to the church a couple of times before I did this, yeah. just so then I can understand In charge who's, of, yep. you know, who am I working with? Who's the people? Um, this was during COVID, so they weren't doing in-person. Usually they do in-person auditions, but I, I sent out a video. They just wanted us to sing a worship song. So I sang okay. a song called Soul Will Lie. It's a very classic uh, Christian song. And so it was one of my favorites, so I sang that. They said, you know what? We're gonna have you on the team, we love it. And so I just started going on the team. And my very first time, on stage they okay. had me sing a whole song i don't know like they were uh -huh. having auditions for a single 
like yeah. a, not, not a single a solo and nobody wanted right. nobody wanted to go so i was like you know what you know what let me try it out let me see what mm. what would happen if i did this and i'm very happy i did because you know my very first time i sang a song okay. called good god almighty with the background with the choir in the background and me in the front and i just i started singing you know um and it was crazy man because it's my very first time on that stage and, and i actually got to off, lead huh? something. so for you there was any type of yeah. nervousness that goes that goes into it and i have a few spicy questions for you as well because obviously there's some differences between um islam and christianity and i want to get your mind and, and and kind of pick your brain to see what's the purpose of life man because i would argue that most people who are depressed most people who don't know where to head towards they don't know what the purpose of life is and they feel like they're just there to be there right. they exist and there's no reason for them existing so what's what's your your mm -hmm. take on the meaning of life <clears throat> the purpose of life in my opinion is you know we're here to you know f fulfill this life that jesus gave us mm -hmm. that he died on the cross for us for for our sins we don't even deserve to be alive but through his mercy he died on the cross to to replace our death and what we're here to do yeah. is bring people to god i feel like that's the purpose of life bring people to god follow this path through christ live like christ and also get our own families mm -hmm. raise our families you know not you know just doing all this playing around with other girls but finding the one waiting till marriage yeah and then what's your take on having multiple wives and having not even relationships let's just stay wise for now for me i i don't um really embrace that i feel like for me okay. i just i want to find the one and i want to have <clears throat> one wife and have kids with her and live the rest mm -hmm. of my life with okay. her until i die yeah yeah and well, i mean me. so here's here's the best way to explain it now obviously anybody who knows about islam knows that you can have up to four wives um how most people see it nowadays is you have four wives that means you got four servants or four people that you can quote unquote mess around with um back then the only reason why people had multiple wives was because these wives did not have the men to take care of them so it was a responsibility because what would happen is men would go at war men would be dying and there was a there was not a sufficient amount of men to take care of these women and it was almost a duty a task that this man had to do because back then until right now this is the only time in the world where there is a fight against masculinity where they say um men are not needed okay every single time up until this century um men were were needed so was women obviously um but up until right now that's changed so with my take on that man have as many wives as you can just don't hurt nobody while doing it that's all <laughs> don't hurt nobody while doing it so when, when we're talking about religion of course because we're looking at it from two different angles and this is why this is a very interesting conversation because i'm a very religious guy myself you're mm -hmm. christian i'm muslim yeah, yeah so yeah. obviously <laughs> for me i don't believe mm -hmm. that jesus is god and i believe yeah. that god is god um and for me that i can't wrap my head around mm -hmm. a, a entity a human being who walked on this earth being the person who i worship who who is god um and you know there's a lot of takes that go on that there's even uh scholars that that have tried to prove and mention that that jesus wasn't even mentioned as god in, in the bible itself um and that god was mentioned as god mm -hmm. so i has have never even done the research about it so i'm um, you know, if, if, if anybody should be having this yeah. conversation, um, it should be a person who is a scholar. I, because I know about religion, I don't want to spread false information. Right, right, right. And I want to make sure that every single piece of information, especially about religion that I spread, mm -hmm. is 110% true. Um, so, I mean, what's, what's your take on that, man? I mean, I know it's, it's very, uh, it's a hot topic. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. It's not, there's not really like one answer, man. I'm just telling you that, like, mm -hmm. everybody has their own beliefs. And I'm not going to say that, oh, you have to believe in this and yeah. that's it. No, that's not how it is, bro. Honestly, um, as long as we have that relationship with God, I think that's all that matters. So God sent his only son, mm -hmm. Jesus, to the earth 
so that he could see how it is to be a human being okay. and see how we work. You know, we, we, we were sinning left and right. We didn't deserve this life, but Jesus said, you know what? Forgive them, God, don't kill them, kill me. And to replace their sins, replace what they do so that they can be, yeah. they can have mercy and have grace. Here's, here's the most beautiful thing about religion. So again, we're both two very religious people, but the only idea about religion, and you can ask right. any, any uh, uh, religious person who is either Muslim, Christian, whatever it may be, as long as you're following a path and you're doing good right. with people, even if you're the wrong religion, then you can still go to heaven. Um, so that's that's exactly how that works as mm -hmm. well. Right. Um, now let's get into the singing side of things. Obviously, uh, you said that you started okay, off okay. being a singer and you were singing about things that you didn't want to sing about initially. Um, yeah. You had like a whole entire Instagram page. Right. You had, I mean, how did that work for you, man? So yeah, bro. I just I was lost. I was really lost. Um, I cared about the opinion of others at first, and I saw how the music industry works around this world, and that it doesn't mm -hmm. involve Christian rappers. You know, that's not, that's not something that people want to listen to, and that's why I let it get to my mind. I let it change who I was, and I started releasing music that just was about me and about girls and about life, and you know, and it just it wasn't. I I just yeah. I felt clueless like i um, felt like part of me was dead it was only until then um i had uh kind of mm -hmm. like a near-death experience to where um i okay. had uh my appendix ruptured Ooh. my appendix ruptured and i didn't know what it was at first you know starting with the new year um my i had pain in my side but I was like, man, it was probably something I ate. I'm not going to go to the hospital and wait and all these lines just to go see what it was. So I let it go on for Ooh, a okay. few weeks, maybe a couple <clears throat> months, and it started getting worse. And it was it was only until one week, bro, where I believe my mm -hmm. appendix ruptured. So it exploded. So the appendix is like a little, it's like a mm -hmm. little piece on the end of your intestine. And for me it was it was causing constipation bro i couldn't use the bathroom i had to Other use you know of, yeah. um laxatives just to just to go to the restroom and it was so unhealthy for me and it was hurting me and when it exploded i felt so much pain bro like everywhere oh. right here in my stomach area i felt so much pain i said you know what i'm going to the hospital i'm going to the er i went to the er and they saw me right away because they see the, my body language. They see I was hurting. They saw me right away. They they did you know autopsy. They did like uh, they did X-ray. You know they did ultrasound. They couldn't figure out what it was. It was only till then I spent the night to do a CAT scan, and they said, "Hey, your appendix ruptured," and they say, um, "You know if you didn't come in on time, you would have died because this this." this pus okay. it was like a pus that came out of the appendix it was a poisonous pus and they said it was spreading throughout your organs through your kidneys you know through your lungs through your gallbladder through your liver and it said it would have caused failure like, like if heart, you did not failure, come in basically this this night basically caused mm -hmm. you know caused the body to shut down and i said you know what you know god mm. still wants me here Cause he would have let me. He would have let me die if he didn't okay. have a plan for me. If he had a purpose, and that's why I want to. I want to tell these people to the audience that if you woke up this morning, that's Absolutely. the number one blessing. Cause God is not done with you, and he he has a purpose for you. Whether it's to bring people to him, whether it's to help others as a doctor, as you know, whether it's to sing, to you know, like all this stuff. This is just he has a purpose, mm -hmm. and he wants mm -hmm. you to bring people to him. That's the purpose. So I was so thankful that he okay you know saved my life that i said you know what now it's time to represent you now i'm gonna pay the favor back so i said you know what screw what i think about music yeah. i was i was i was thinking about like you know what i want to do christian music but i didn't go through that bridge yet because i was still thinking mm. about myself and the opinion of others 
But really, that life, the near-death life experience, really helped me cross that bridge to say, you know what? God is the way, and right, he's who right. I want to represent, not myself. Mm -hmm. And then as far as influencing people, yeah. so, I mean, whether whether you think it or not, you're an influencer, right? So your, your main job, your point of life, the reason why you're here um, is so you can spread your message and spread God's word, per se. When do you stop? When is it like, and I, I know the answer is probably never, um, but when are you like, dang, I succeeded, I did something mm -hmm. very great? What's, what's, like, what's the end point? When Jesus comes back, that's the end point, man. When the rapture appears, that's, that's okay. what I think, that's when I'll stop. Because he'll be like, you know what? You did your job, good job, welcome to my kingdom. You know, like, I feel like there's no, there's no stopping. But at the same time, I will only do like a podcast or something when I feel like something wants me to say something. Mm -hmm. Like the Holy Spirit in me speaks when when it needs to speak and i say you know what now is the time let me turn on the camera let me say something to help encourage others about god help bring them to him and you know help people who who don't know because you know he's just a loving god he, he wants to see the best for you man he never he just wants to love you yo like mm -hmm. he wants the best for you but people <clears throat> okay people don't see that People see, oh, God, he made hell for you because you're sinning. God didn't even make hell for you. He made it for, you know, that's, the that's devil, for, this, for the true. demons, you know. But it's what brought, what we do yeah. brings us to hell. If we don't allow God into our hearts, if we don't allow Jesus into our hearts, what we do on this earth brings us to hell because we automatically say, hey, I don't need you. You know, I don't need you. I could do my own thing. And it will bring us down there. It's not him. He doesn't bring us down there. It's ourselves. Yeah, ourselves yeah. bring us to Absolutely. hell. And, and then we're, we're talking about, like, first of all, beautiful. Yeah, Secondly, bro. we're talking about, let's say, um, uh, degeneracy almost and, and the life that we live nowadays. Now, there's many, many signs that, that suggest it could possibly be the end of the world very, very soon. Uh, we're talking about men looking like women and women looking like men that's just one of the smaller signs um and even it even says it in, in the quran i'm not sure i've never read the bible i'm not gonna act like i have um it even says it in the quran that that that's literally one of the yeah. signs and we see in our own eyes and it's happening and we're not even talking about like like transgenders and stuff like that we're talking about people completely doing the wrong things and people who are completely misled and 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 the the fight against that is very very slow i saw a video that completely saddened me. It was a drag queen. It was basically a man dressed up as a woman that was in front of kids at a school. Uh -huh. And parents were there with their kids watching this little show that was going on. And they were supporting it. They were loving it, clapping, everything. And this is in a, we're talking about like, it's, it's an elementary school almost. There was a gentleman mm -hmm. that yeah. stood up, this African-American gentleman. And he said, you're going against God this and that and he was you know spinning facts talking about the truth and those parents were trying to stop him saying he's a bad influence he's spreading bad vibes bad juju whatever you want to call it and it's it's a mess it is a mess yeah you know, we're so so far from the truth that that and and you can see everything that is spoken in these books that have been there for such a long time um and you can just see it all happening right in front of your eyes yeah, bro. And honestly, I have no hate against Absolutely. nobody. God loves everybody, bro. He, he, he literally, the purpose is for him to say, you do whatever you want on this earth. I just ask if you could follow me. But he doesn't, he doesn't force you to do anything. Oh, yeah. He lets you do whatever you want on this earth. Now, there's no against, there's no, nothing against, you know, LGB2 community, transgender. There's nothing against that. The only thing I'm against is that you're influencing kids when they're young, when they don't know nothing, saying, hey, this TV shows, you know, in the TV shows in Disney, you know, it's showing, you know, two men together, two women together. That's the only thing really that I kind of see myself distancing from because it's like you can't force kids to choose. You know, this is something that you have to grow through in life. As an adult, yes, you can choose, but just embracing that as a kid, I feel yeah, like that is yeah, absolutely not right, um, you know? The best feeling that you can possibly have in this world, and I know this, I'm speaking, this is a factual, evident thing 
And I can promise that anybody who goes through it will feel their absolute best. Um, and this is outside of religion. We're not talking anything religious. Um, is just being against right, or, right, or, right. or beating the odds of something happening. Let's say you're born in a, I don't know, in the Middle East. Let's say, such as yourself, you're from Palestine. Let's say you're born in Palestine. You grow mm -hmm. up and you see all these issues and things that are happening in Palestine and then you move and you figure something out for yourself and you become this very rich, very wealthy guy who can take care of everyone and is just being hit by the, so many battles that you have to face. And I always say, say it this way. Um, if you're going through something, it'll feel 10 times better if you figure it out yourself and if you work through it and if you do what you got to do, then somebody who's not going through these things. So you have the blessing, you have the opportunity to feel a type of feeling that you, that nobody else around you can feel. And you're somehow sitting there and complaining and saying, Oh, God did this to me. How could he, Oh, this person did this to me. How could they, but I would love for everything to be against me. I love problems, man. And I'm not, not in a sense that I like, I, I like seeing problems. I just like to fix the problems. Like, bring it on, man. Bring it on business wise, anything wise. Um, and what do, I mean, what do you think about somebody, somebody saying, why me, God, or anything along those lines? Is that, is that haram per se? A lot of people love to blame God for deaths, for, you know, things going on in their lives. But he's just a builder. I've heard this one thing before. Somebody said, um, there's a man building a house, right? And he's building a house for these people. And the people live in the house. These robbers come in. They destroy the house. Who are they going to blame? The robbers or the builders? Absolutely. That's very they true. They blame the robbers. So that's how it is in life. Jesus, God, mm -hmm. is, is the builder of our lives. And whatever happens on this earth, it has nothing to do with him. It's the robbers. It's the people that don't believe in him, that cause harm, that cause evil. And it just people go quick mm -hmm. to blame God for everything. when they should either blame themselves or blame this corrupt, you know, humanity that we live in because you know there's For demons sure. out there there's spiritual wars yep. happening throughout everywhere even though we can't see in the human eyes it's happening but there's things that god is helping us with like let's say you know we're late to work you know i can't find my keys man like my where's man. my keys i'm my upset man. i'm late to work i'm gonna get yelled at bro listen listen god said you know what i'm gonna hide your keys my because man. there's a car Absolutely. accident that was gonna happen to you and I'm going to make sure it doesn't happen to you. So I'm going to make sure you mm. can't find your keys until a certain point that you do Absolutely. find it and you can head to work safely. Even I believe things happen for a terrible. reason. I had, at, at some point, uh, my father was in the army. He was in Iraq and he was, he was fighting wars because um, he's an absolute mm -hmm. G. Um, so you can see where I come from. Anywho, um, right. he used to fight wars yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was telling me a story and i love his like war stories and all that he's a very very like it's very hard to make him laugh and he's like very he's either super super nice or he's like very like blunt and yeah. you know um and great great guy obviously what mm -hmm. he had seen and i could be paraphrasing paraphrasing this somewhat but there was four other guys with him about four guys and these four other guys were all choosing to go towards one direction this was okay. a war they all chose to go that one direction. But my father saw a rabbit. This rabbit mm -hmm. went the opposite path. He went somewhere else where they didn't want to go. So my father went alone and he followed the rabbit. All those four guys were killed. My father stayed alive. And he managed to, because you in Iraq back then, you had, to, you had to fight. You didn't have a choice. If you were a man, you had to fight. Um, and he ended up actually escaping because, I mean, he just, he just left. And a lot of people Very did. How he ended up escaping was he actually held on to a train. So there was a train um, uh, going by, and he was holding on like to the to the to the tips of the train, um, with it, like barely barely hanging. And we're talking for miles, hours, barely hanging on. Um, at some point, he was even on a bridge. So if he were to let go, that's it. And there was like rocks under him and everything. Yeah. So my father is a is a fighter for sure. Um, and yeah, and we get life so easy right now, but that's kind of the same example that I give you. Honestly, bro, yeah, bro, God bless your father, you know, like he, 
he knew that if if I killed you know your pops that you wouldn't be here we wouldn't be having this conversation man we wouldn't be talking about god uh, he saw it's crazy bro because he saw the plan before the plan happened absolutely, he saw man. the plan before the plan happened and it's crazy like he'll he will save your life in the craziest ways man in the cra that rabbit that that oh, that's yeah. like an angel bro guiding your dad to the other path everybody wants to follow in this life everybody wants to follow the path that everybody's Dude. going that's why it's so yeah. wide that path is so wide but there's only that narrow path that leads to God, that leads to Jesus, and only a few people will follow it because through that path, you have to avoid partying. You know, you're not smoking, you're not hanging out with other people, you're not following the world, following the sex, the pornography, the sin, the drugs, everything. That's that narrow path, and mm. you're, you're you're disciplined in that path. Not a lot of people can follow that path. That's Absolutely. why not a lot of. And then people you were talking about music too. As far as music goes, um, there is some insight of some musicians saying it's completely rigged. They say it is rigged fully, and that uh -huh. you kind of have to sign your soul off to the devil. And ninety-five percent of me definitely believes that. Obviously, I wasn't. I, I I'll even say I believe that fully. Obviously, I believe there's a devil. There is people out there that have demons, and especially when you drink and you get really intoxicated, you let your body, you let your temple, your guard down for anything to jump in. That's why you see people act mm -hmm. weird. That's why you see people act stupid. It's because they're allowing these spirits to jump into them right. when their temple is low. You have a TikTok, you have pages. Have you had a chance to maybe speak with the people that you're trying to influence and what kind of community do you have? Because I, I don't know what it is, what it's like to explore um, what you do at all. So I, I'd love to learn more about that. Honestly, bro, I um, it, would, it just started off with regular followers. Um, I didn't start speaking until I saw my relationship with God go stronger. I started losing friends. I started losing brothers that I thought I would die with. But I seen the real picture of how they are. And I seen that they will not follow the path that I'm following with God. They don't want to embrace him into their hearts. I said, you know what? I have to close doors. And me closing these doors elevated me and allowed me to see who I really am. And the purpose that I, I have, what God wants me to do. And it was only till then is when I said, you know what? Why don't I just tell people about God? I have the technology. I have, like, God wants you to use this technology. You can reach 5 million people at the same time using this remarkable AI through text message, through Snapchat, through Instagram. You know, it's remarkable, the technology we have. And God's going to be like, how many people did you bring to me? And I started making these videos with no audience. And it started to grow as as I started making videos. I started seeing the Christian community. I started seeing people, who, you know, actually be like, you know what? Like, he's right. And there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there. They yeah. say, oh, I'm not going to believe something I can't see. You know, God's uh, God's not God's not just going to say, oh, hey, how are you doing? And appear right in front of you. He's going to show himself mm -hmm. through you, through the blessings of others through the people that you encounter, through the path that you have, he's, he's not going to appear right in front of you, but he's going to show you what's around you to say, hey, that was me. In, in Arabic, deen means religion, and then dunya means world. So religion over the world. It basically means that you have all these distractions in life, and you have um, something as simple as just the need to be wealthy, the need to be greedy, the need to, to have some type of acceptance from people around you who will never care about you. And the idea that you can pick God and do the right thing every single time instead of picking all these distractions around the world means that you're picking God before you're picking this dunya, which is the world that you live in. Um, now, it's, it's very easy after reading the Quran to know that your body is something that you don't own. It's, it's something that has been given to you. Everyone has a soul. Everyone is more or less the, the, the same um, when it comes to how they're being created. And even if you're not equal in this world, you're equal in the way that you're being judged. You're equal in the way that, that you can make decisions for the most part. All right, so, so question for you. Why is it awkward for people to talk about religion then? Why was it, why, why, why did you kind of like stay away from speaking about religion and, 
and, and trying to get into it very early. And why do people sometimes, I'm just getting your point of view, obviously, why do people sometimes get scared to even talk about religion? It's because religion, it's, I think religion, it's, it's a okay. title that people take. And I, I don't want you to focus on the religion, you know? I want you to focus on the relationship. That's why they both start with R's, religion, relationship. Religion comes after that relationship that you have with God, but just saying, oh, hey, I'm a Christian. Hey, I'm a Muslim. Hey, I'm a Catholic. Like that title can mean something, but having that relationship mm -hmm. with God means everything. If you're a Christian, then should you at some point in your life explore other religions? And what I mean by explore, I mean like read about other religions and maybe read the book for that religion and try to seek other ways to see if there's an, any other path outside of this religion or should you just stay very close-minded and and you know zone on the, the the exact religion that you're on um mm -hmm. i was a catholic before as i mentioned and now i'm a christian honestly i feel like you know we both have something similar sure. as you as a muslim as me as a christian because we both believe in god we both believe in God. We both believe there's mm -hmm. evil Prophets. in this world and there's good. We both believe that the rap the rapture is coming. There's prophets. You know, there's there's false prophets. Mm -hmm. There's an antichrist coming. We both believe that. And I do have Muslim friends. And I'm not going to say, oh, just because yeah. you're Muslim, I can't hang out with you. Heck no. I believe that if you're a good person and that you have a relationship with God, that you know what I do want to hang out with this guy. I want I want to embrace what he has going on, but at the same time I want to tell him about my what's going on with me, and see what he thinks about him. Deep down, it's very evident what the true religion is if you open your eyes and you look at all the different religions and you see what's true and what's not. Now, obviously, the answer to that question is very different for you and I. So honestly, I think it's it depends on the way you grew up really um you know your parents grew up you know muslim my parents grew up catholic it's really like the way mm -hmm. you grow up forms who you are and as an adult as like when you get older you start to yeah. see oh is this what i really want to follow or is, <clears throat> or is there something else i want to do so it's it's really the impact that we have from our families that you know forms who we are yeah, i used to volunteer at a church so we used to take this big truck i was a lot younger at the time and we used to my father and i would take food and this is for for christians right. this is for a church we would take food that they were about to throw away perfectly good food by the way we would take it we would put it in the in the back of a van we would go to the church and we just pass it out to everybody else um and that's that was a regular thing for us that was a weekly thing we used to Perfect. go my dad and i used to be the ones to get the food we used to fill up this whole entire um uh, minivan almost you know those vans with the two seats at the front but it has the whole entire container the, we used to fill up this whole entire thing and yeah yeah yeah. At, at yeah, the yeah, church. yeah and not once did my father mention that um we uh, sorry not once did my father mention that i shouldn't listen or i shouldn't hear what they're saying he just kind of assumed um that I i'll know the right path um so that's something else as well well listen um you know yeah, it's you follow whatever plan you want because God gave you the free will to do whatever you want, man. And honestly, it's as long as you do good, you you know you help others, and you're not you know wasting your life. Absolutely, I feel Absolutely. like that's all that matters. And that's kind of the message of this whole entire my, podcast. Yeah. But either way, man, it was it was a beautiful podcast. I definitely appreciate mm -hmm. you for um, hopping on. We'll we'll definitely stay in touch. Um, and your socials will be down in the description. Everything will be down in the description. Um, any last questions, any last words, shout thank outs, you, messages? Um, bro, honestly, I just want to say thank you again. I, Absolutely. I respect as you as an individual and I, I think this, this was sure. meant, this was meant to happen, bro. We needed to encourage both of our audiences. We needed to tell our audiences, Hey, like God is the way, you know, the end is coming soon. Absolutely. We see Bible prophecy happening as we speak, bro. And I just want to encourage everybody if you don't know god get to know him he he loves you he he wants the best for you he 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 just he wants to protect you he he wants the best for you fam and just do what you got to do but invite him into your heart and he will change who you are he will change your life you'll see your life change as you speak put god above everything and your life will come 
um, successful. You will be successful if you put God first. That's my final message to you. Yeah!